Hello, my name is Alex Lee and I am from DesignC. In our previous episodes, we featured a few projects with a unique extension at the side of the home, crafting a new identity for the semi-detached property. Some were crafted in precast concrete, bricks and steel, and even in aluminium structures. Today's episode on Design Seed, we are about to feature an exciting piece of statement previously featured in magazines, books, and international websites. You may have seen this in Design, Art Daily, or even in Tatler Asia. But today, let us bring you through our version with the in depth of the Billboard House. If you're new to our channel, please support us by clicking on that subscribe button and keep the notification bell on to stay in the loop of more of our series of compelling interior design and architecture projects. A suburban terrace house, like any other, tucked away quiet and free from the city's liveliness, not far away from Kuala Lumpur. Owned by a young family who requested for minimal intervention. The approach was to reimagine a form befitting a corner house and to repurpose the living spaces on the ground level. The new form is intended to be simple but bold contrasting it with the existing fabric of tropical suburban homes. From the plan view, you could see that the home was reconfigured and extended to be accustomed to the owner's requirement which suits their daily lifestyle. The most interesting part of this property is not just about the sculptured form of the architecture, but how the spatial choreography is planned to create a fluent flow of cross-ventilation. When the pavilion is, is askew at the side, right, it, of course it creates a break from the actual building. When it creates a break from the actual building, you will have light that comes through the building and then also ventilation that runs across the building. During the design process, I visited the Mulu Caves in Sarawak. It's a very amazing space because the, of the light quality that's coming from one end. You can't distinct between the floor, wall and the ceiling. It's in one kind of uh, material which is, I find it's very uh, inspiring uh, to, for me to create this pavilion. My idea was trying to create a shape that would somehow elongate the pavilion to make it look bigger. So how would I achieve that? One of the ways was to, to take inspiration from the Mulu Caves and to create this art shape. because you have no distinction between wall and ceiling yet because it's in one uh, continuous shape. The two timber doors might appear to be very heavy. However, they are made out of planks of pine timber, which is lightweight. So this makes the user open the door more effortlessly. Now. The pavilion is designed to have multiple uh, series of platforms. That means uh, there's two platforms, uh, one which is on the lower side and one which is on the higher side. And uh, those platforms define the spaces below. So the lower side one defines the dining room area with, with, uh, with a light that goes across it. And also the higher one is at the living area. And also on top of the higher level is the balcony area. This kind of uh, change in spaces and hierarchy has different vantage view or different levels of uh, experience where you can look into the space from one space to another. I think
think the greatest challenge was probably the construction of it. Because the, the form work to create the fair face concrete was very challenging because it, it was made out of a singular cast. So all the form work had to be constructed first and braced properly for that single cast because of the intention of wanting a very uh, consistent effect to the space. The form work made out of timber had to be braced with steel frames to ensure because concrete is very heavy in liquid form, we had to make sure that uh, the form work stays in place. Uh, one special feature about the, the pavilion is the inverted arch or would I say uh, we made a joke with the client is the smiley window and the, the, the smiley window is an inverted arch created by intention there was an intention behind it because if you're from the study room looking towards the the arch opening in front of you you will see an arch opening but we inverted that arch on this side uh, of the study room to complement with the arch that is already upright you would have a continuous uh, shape or continuous feeling to the to the building. Unlike normal homes where plasterboard ceilings are commonly used, to maintain the monochromatic tonalities of the interior, the ceilings were left to its original forms. Hence, the lighting positionings needed to be precisely constructed and there can't be any room for errors because once you are required to relocate the light points, the hacking works would destroy the evenness of the precast concrete. We have now seen how this compelling architecture stages itself distinctively different from the norm. But just when we were about to depart the venue, the architecture paraded a transformation of another interesting element that I needed to highlight in this video. When the skies turn darker, the interior lighting punctures through the curves of the architecture, which creates an interesting sight from the exterior. To a certain extent, it looks like a futuristic cave dwelling. Wall lights and uptrow lights that creates a soft balance of lighting that emphasizes on the majestic form of the curve architecture. When both the front doors are open wide, a statement of the interior is impressively exhibited, and when the doors are shut, a soft, subtle ambience is highlighted off the exterior facade. Home extension and renovation to maximising the property's land size is fairly common nowadays. However, the amount of money to spend has to be spent wisely with a purpose which suits your lifestyle. Subscribe to us now and stay tuned to learn more about the interior design and architecture influences which could uplift your living quality. Don't forget to keep the notification button on. I'll see you in our next episode. My name is Alex Lee. Thank you for watching.